After Hours. On this episode of the History of the Chorus After Hours podcast, we sit down and talk about the band from Fort Worth, Texas, known as O oh Sleeper. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, at IsSurvivedByPro, for news and the latest episode postings. And make sure to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using. Make sure to check us out on TikTok and give us a follow at Is Survived by Productions. And if you'd like to see us do some live streams, leave us a comment or tweet us the keyword stream. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. The devil is in Atlanta. <laughs> Army surrounded. Welcome back to the History of the Course After Hours Podcast. My name is Curtis, and on each and every episode of this podcast, I sit down with my good friend and avid listener to the History of the Course Podcast, Eric. What up, Eric? It's hot outside. It's hot. Yes. It's almost like we're, it's summer. We're in that awkward... To me, we're in that awkward um, phase where... It's hot outside, but it's still cool enough in the morning that I need to wear a long sleeve. We're both wearing long sleeves. You're kind of wearing one of those kind of baseball type. I don't even remember what they call them. It's because I'm cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's just one of those where it's like, I, I like spring, but it's like, make up your mind. It's either winter or it's summer, you know, and let's just be done with it. Because what we had, that was my other thing too. I talked to somebody this last week at my job and I was like, you can't give me three days in a row of 80 degree weather where I get to wear short sleeves and just chill out in the sun. And then next thing you know, it's 50 degrees for the highs again. I'm like, no, you can't do that. Don't, don't do that to me. You know, I don't, I don't like that. Welcome to, uh, what we get spring. This is the best. This is our world. Welcome to our world. So. Uh, In other news in our world today, we're going to be talking about the band from Fort Worth, Texas, known as O Sleeper. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. O Sleeper. Um, It's a great band. If you you have not checked them out yet, if you didn't check them out after me and Josh talking about them, you should check them out now because this is your last and final warning. I don't know. I mean, no, I mean, just like, come on. This is a band that, that needs to be, um, that needs to be looked up. They need, um, they just need to, don't sleep on them. And that's one of the things we're going to be talking about here in just a little bit, but it's just like, it feels like this band is underrated. And it, it, to me, that's disrespectful because I mean, this band is, they've been around for a while, 2004, maybe. I think it's when they put out their first EP. So 2003, 2004, I think is when they formed. So, I mean, they've been around for forever. Um, only have four full length albums, you know, to, to, you know, go in their discography, but still, man, I mean, they're four, all four of them are so good. So good, man. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about all four of them too today also. Uh, but, uh, as always, I want to jump into this first question, uh, for Eric here, um, how or when did you learn of the band O oh Sleeper? I feel like I heard about them a long time ago. Like, you know, I don't even know, probably like 2008, 2010, somewhere in that range. But this summer, I or well, I guess last summer now, summer of 2022, I heard they were coming to town with a uh, pretty cool band. I don't know if you heard of them. Uh, Norma Jean. Who's that? <laughs> uh, they're pretty cool. You ought to check them out too. Never heard of them before. But, uh, so they were coming with Norma Jean. So I started listening to them a little bit then. And then after the show, I went full bore on them. They're really good. So, so you're kind of limited when you went into the show is what you're saying. I really was. Cause I mean, I was really focusing more on getting into Norma Jean cause that was the headliner. Well, for sure. Yeah. And then, uh, hearing them though, I was like, you know, they're worth some investigation, but I can wait. And then hearing them live though, I was like, yeah, these guys need some serious investigation. Right. Um, do you remember like 
maybe somebody that that showed you or did you just stumble upon them by yourself oh i mean it could have been you that showed me it could have been uh oh i had some friends in high school that were always trying to show me music that i was always ignoring so don't ignore your friends yeah you know come back to it later after they're not looking and <laughs> right no i'd never listen to that band and in secret be like oh this band's so good this band's pretty lit man <laughs> why is this band so good it's my guilty pleasure now i can't tell them that i like this band yeah um so yeah let's let's talk a little bit about that live show experience um how many songs do they play like six uh, it wasn't very many at all I see mean, and that's what's weird to me because i've looked up recent probably within the past year maybe year and a half or two of set list that they've done of course they don't play a whole lot of shows right now i don't really know what the deal is maybe they just kind of have you know things going on with outside of the band but um yeah it seems like their set lists are super short and it's not like they're playing like 10 minute songs you know no i mean with the they did play about six songs when i was when i seen them there and it looks like i mean hush i l fissure world without the sun that's like a is that three minutes even all together well i mean a world without the sun oh world without the sun um i mean it's pretty I short say it's under three minutes maybe yeah it, it's pretty short sun of the morning and finisher and seekers nothing there that's i don't even think that any of those break into four minutes but man that was a that part of the show we just got done with aaron gillespie doing a uh <laughs> Yeah, give us a setup here because doing this, a, this uh, is always funny to me. He did we've a, talked about acoustic this set several times. Already. Yeah, <laughs> at a metal show, and uh, he did surprising surprisingly well in my opinion. He ended it out with like, uh, what's that album called? He played uh, Summer Weather, I think is what it's called. Oh, uh, Southern, Southern Southern Weather. Yeah, it's. I don't really know his solo stuff all that well, Very but good, yeah. Uh, he he ended up with a couple of like songs that he kind of adapted when he went to Underworld, and so the crowd was already kind of excited. There's some energy going on, and then uh, O Sleeper jumped up there and just hit it hard, <laughs> melted everybody's face. There was not a face left in the crowd. There's just and, a bunch uh, of skeletons. <laughs> I lost. I really lost count of how many people were flying over the top of my head. All these crowd surfers, all these guys doing stage dives. Like I lost count. Yeah. And I think we've talked about it a little bit before. Went back to that same venue and now posted throughout the entire venue, no stage diving. It will result in immediate expulsion. We can't figure out how that came about, but I really like to think of it as it was that night right there. I in, think so. In uh, <laughs> what, the middle of September of 2022 that uh, got the venue to decide, yeah, no more stage diving. <laughs> There it had probably, to be the, the more than two probably, dozen times because right, it was The owners wild. probably came out and was like, what, what is happening down there, man? <laughs> oh, my gosh, what are these kids doing? Yeah, because I don't think, to be honest, I don't um, – what was that venue called? Vanguard. Vanguard. I don't know. Um, I mean, I seem to – even like when we were looking up, um, you know, that concert this past summer – um, you know, tickets and everything like that. I was kind of looking around at the calendar. It's like, they don't, I mean, nothing compared to having, you know, O Sleeper, uh, Norma Jean, and even like Emery all in the same build. There was nothing compared to I that. think they called it Label of, Fest or yeah, something like that. Fest, yep. Started out with a little band, kind of went into Aaron Gillespie, uh, then O Sleeper, of course. Turn it up, the, turn it up man. Just See, and I, I really thought after that, Emery came up, and I was like, okay, cool. I know their stuff. They're going to be a little bit more chill in you the really crowd. I think they would, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, and that's the crazy part to me after, when I asked After you O that. Sleeper kind of jumped down, everybody's just fidgeting, and they're ready for this. And the, as soon as they hit, I mean, I think one of their first songs when they played early in their set was uh, – oh, Was it Studying Politics? Studying Politics, yeah, yes. that's a good one. And that is a hot song. One, Everybody yeah. in the crowd knew it. And that pit was the entire floor. Yeah. And yep. uh, at that point, a little hardcore dancing girl hit me in the gut, and I said, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> Abuse. <laughs> Dang, man. It mm. was a lot of fun. That show was great. Studying politics. I haven't listened to Emory in probably a couple of months, man. That's oh, that's a really good one, man. That is a great It's like an eraser. It's like a pencil with erasers at both ends. Yes. Hands. And as soon as that hit, <laughs> the whole crowd oh, lost yeah. it. <laughs> it's one of those oh, yeah. things. 
Yeah. You just know. It's such a good band. Um, yeah, that's to me the crazy thing too is like they really they technically only have three members right now. O Sleeper, we're back on O Sleeper here. Um, yeah, they technically only have three members. Um, Micah, which is the lead vocalist, um, I can never remember the guitarist name, and he's just oh, he's so sick. Between his clean vocals and his guitar work is just so sick, and he's the one that was. That joined up with um, all of the As I Lay Dying members to form Woven War. Um, he, I don't think he, I don't, he maybe he did play guitar in there too, but he did vocals at least. I know that on Woven War, uh, and then they have a drummer. But they had four people at the concert, right? Because I think they ended up getting like a touring basis, probably. Yeah, there was another guy up there for sure. Yeah. It, but that mean, being said, my back was to the uh, stage quite a bit of the time. You just gotta watch yourself. I was I'll watching to for, the music. Uh, I just gotta watch out for myself. Watching here. people come over the top of my head, pass yeah. them along to the stage, you know. Right. Yeah. So I mean, just for even just for those three guys of like recording, you know, their last album because there was only three of them on the last album, um, "Bloodied and, and Unbowed." Oh my gosh, man! I mean, just that that album hits so hard, dude. It really does. It's didn't so skip heavy. A beat. It's so heavy, and he turns Micah turns up his vocals, his unclean vocals, up every single album, dude. It's so sick. Oh man, I think that's actually the first um, album that he really did like a low scream on. On uh, was it Decimation and Burial? Towards the very end of it. Yeah, and I remember the first time I heard that, I was like, whoa, whoa, that's a first. Finally took him four albums to, to get some lows. Okay, interesting. And then I started thinking about, you know, it's like, well, it's kind of interesting that he never really does any lows. He just does highs. Yeah, you can call some mids, I guess. But Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it seems like, you know, most vocalists, unclean vocalists, they have their highs and they have their lows, you know. Vocally, not you know, career, career, career wise. <laughs> Some of them do on that too, but um, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to you wanted to talk about on the on the uh, live show? Just they really left me wanting more. See, and that's the thing. maybe they, maybe they knew what they were doing with just hey, we're just gonna hit six songs because we want to walk off the stage and people are like, what? That's it? Six songs? Six songs? And like I said, one of them oh, like two and a half minutes long. And what was maybe. it again? Hush, Hush, I L Fisher. Uh, world here. without the sun. Uh, I know you said sun of the morning in there also. A world without the sun, Hushiel, Fissure, sun of the morning, finisher, oh. and seekers. Oh. See, and it's, it was oh, a, it was man. a play set. That, that I mean, is a, that is a really good set right there, man. That is a really good set. Woo! I'm sweating over here, people. <laughs> Well worth it. I'm getting hot and bothered over here, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we we kind of uh, mentioned it just a little bit a little bit ago here at the beginning. Um, in your opinion, how how slept on, how underrated is this band, and why do you think that they're not more popular? Then, I, and I don't know. Maybe this is just my opinion that I feel like they're just not as popular as I think they should be. I mean, maybe, maybe they are more popular than I realize, but it just doesn't seem like they're as popular as I think they should be, or they're well known. Yeah, <laughs> they're way slept on. Yeah, and just to kind of draw parallels because that's the name of one of the songs, the band I'm about to mention. Uh, as I Lay Dying. I don't know why As I Lay Dying is such a hot band and then O Sleeper is like, you know, really slept on. Right. I mean, they do similar stuff lyrically and everything, uh, guitar and everything else wise. They're in the same kind of category. Right, yeah. I mean, they've got a really cool, distinct sound for both of them. And it's kind of in that same branch of the uh, core tree. Mm. So... Yeah, I don't know why one is just like through the roof popular, and you say as I lay dying, everybody goes, "Well, yeah, I listen to them." Oh, them. And then the you say, "Oh, sleeper," and they go, "Huh? I'm not sleeping. Well, you, well you're sleeping. No, <laughs> you're no, sleeping. no, it's a band, you idiot. You're <laughs> sleeping on them, is what yeah, I'm saying. You'd be sleeping. Maybe that's so, what they're saying by their um, by their name. They're like, "Oh, you sleepers." And see, you just keep on sleeping on us. 
and some people would almost accredit that to the drama that went on with As I Lay Dying. What, their popularity? Yeah. But they were so they were hot before that. before that, though, yeah. man. Yeah. Because I remember listening to them, I mean, all the way back to uh, Ocean Between Us days. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. At the time, that was top of my playlist all the time. That's a good album. And, uh, yeah, that is a fantastic album. But, uh, anyway, so... And then I I had never really given these guys a chance back then. If I feel like if I would have, they would have been right there next to them. Because I don't know what would that be like, oh eight something well, like that. Ocean, or, uh, Ocean between us. Yeah, yeah something was, in that there. That was oh eight. So. so I mean, shoot, I would have been all over this. Because I don't. Let's see. Son of the morning didn't come out till oh nine. So you would have had uh, when I am God. Um. Yeah, when I am God came out in two thousand seven. Oh, I was wrong. They put out that EP, the Armored March EP in 2006. So um, they've been around since 2006. Well, I should have said. Okay. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's just. And mm. I never did understand why, like I said, one band is just so absolute popular and the other one's just, like I said, almost underground. Right. I mean, not quite to the point where you go to your local record store and go, hey, what's this vinyl, man? Is this the new cool thing? Right. If it is, I don't want it because I need to be underground. Right. <laughs> what's this doing here? It's supposed to be underground. <laughs> this is too popular to be this here. This is too popular to be here. No, Throw no, it no. in the streets. Throw it in the streets, man. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That was supposed to be in our basement section. <laughs> underground. Get it? But um, What was I going to say? Oh, uh, speaking of Azalea Dying, my favorite album is the OG uh, Frail Words Collapse. I can't. I can't get away from that. One. It did, I love most of their discography. I haven't listened to like some of their newer stuff. Um, it, if you like their sound, I don't feel like it's changed all that much. Right. If you can get past the, uh, yeah, the thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll save that for another day. Yes, that's a whole that, that thing on coming. its own. That that episode is definitely coming. Uh, but yeah, I go with the OG frail words collapse, man. But uh, I don't know if it's just you know. Getting back into our original question, I don't know if it's the record label picks this one band and says, we're going to ride that horse. We're going to take this one to the finish line. That O Sleeper horse, eh, we'll take it about halfway there and they can see if they can make it on their own. I mean, maybe. I, I don't know. I mean. So I really don't know if it's just down to the record labels. Right. And that, pro- I don't know, getting that name out there. Yeah. Because I know they, they've done a lot of touring in the past anyway. Right. So, well, and that's what I was about to say. Maybe it's a deal because you think about. They put out three full-length albums in the length of about four years, I believe. Yeah, so they had um, When I'm God in 2007, Sun in the Morning, 09, uh, Children of Fire in 11. And so they didn't put out another full length until 2019, which is the newest one. So maybe, maybe we look at it this way, too, of like, that period between their first album and children of fire in uh, 2011, maybe they were super popular back then. I, I don't know, but that, I guess that gets down to, they weren't popular in my groups, right? In that's my circles. True. Yeah. So, that's true. which is unfortunate because this band is wonderful. Right. Well, and then that's, that's what I'm kind of like, I mean, you would think that if they have four, in, in our opinion, at least, between you and me, we both agree that they have four solid albums. Oh, absolutely. Right? Easily. Um, you would think that, okay, this band stands the test of time, at least in their lifespan, even with the you know hiatus in the middle there of you know, 2014 to you know 19, basically. Um, yeah, you would think that, I just, I don't know. I just can never understand like why this band was not, as popular as or as as big as i felt that they were but i don't know they need more love guys they Give need them more, more love, love. So that's what i'm saying man go definitely go check out this band um oh sleeper just not not a bad honestly i don't feel like there's a bad song in their discography luckily but, it's not in their discography but there is cowboys oh yeah i keep <laughs> i keep forgetting about that song <laughs> we're here to make some noise <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was so funny because um, I don't think it's on the episode, but um, I told Josh, I said, did you know that they put out a song um, after Blade and, Un- and Unbound? He goes, oh, no, I didn't. And I was like, here, let me play it for you <laughs> real quick. 
<laughs> and he started playing it, and he was just like, nope, nope. And I was like, Turn yeah, this off. is weird, man. It's like, yeah. oh, you had me. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about that anymore. Um, it does remind you can me. skip that one. <laughs> it do skip that one. But it does remind me a little bit of, uh, oh, uh, Maylene made a song for wrestling. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, what was that? Crank the Walls Down, I believe. Yeah for Jericho and the big show or something, something like that. Like that yeah. I don't know if they made that or if they covered it. I've heard about four different it, versions I at this point. Yeah. I, at least they made it popular because the popular version I hear is from them and it's better than Cowboys, but it's not on my playlist. Yeah, it's just, it's so weird, man. It's first week is the break and he's just like, damn it, Cowboys. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, they, I'm not going to lie. They kind of had me at the very beginning there. And then he says that and I'm like, Oh, that was the it. The boys were going to make that was, some noise. That and... was the hype. That was the the high point. Oh, okay. Hmm. A little disappointed. Um, I don't know how you feel. I mean, we can talk about it. this. Is not in my notes, but um, oh, we can we can talk about the uh, Titan EP if you want. Because <laughs> that's I was going to say in relation to um, what I was my statement of you know four solid full length albums. Um, you know, Armored March is good. It's it's basically you know, early versions of songs from when I am God. But, um, then you have the Titan EP, which is, it's crazy. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's a terrible album. It's okay. Um, it's just the, the story behind it is just like, why are we putting this on an EP? Why is this not turning into a, a full length EP or a full length album? And, uh, I think the other thing too, was the, uh, bloodied and unbowed is supposed to kind of follow, up Titan EP in, in the story. Uh, okay. Yeah. Not like it is a good EP, generally speaking, too. I really do like it. I mean, um, generally, I do steer clear a little bit of EPs in a lot of times because a lot of times they're mo- they're moving from this you know record company to that record company. It's, yeah. It's recorded in somebody's basement or bedroom, and it's sound quality. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of well. I always kind of feel like an EP kind of shows, hey, this is a change in the changing of times. It's kind of like, oh boy, what's about to happen here? Yeah, and I, I'd steer clear of change because I'm an old man, right? Meh. It my heart, I'm just this old fella. Yeah, <laughs> but that is a really good EP. Actually, I put that one on. Uh, that is on playlists. So okay. I mean, that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, even if the last song is an odd name. What's the, yeah, what is the Or I guess one? maybe it's the first song. Oh, now the, the now Foamy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Which was. Uh, I can't even say that last name. Uh, yeah, the story behind that was. That was the was, donor, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the highest donor. Because this, this was a, um, like a GoFundMe type. It wasn't GoFundMe, but it was a um, fundraising album oh, like that. Yeah. And I can't remember what the site was that used it. It was in my notes, but. Um, crowdfunding type Yeah, basically stuff. crowdfunding, yeah. And so the highest donor, they just used his name as the the title track. Kind of cool, like the chariot. Yeah, but at the same time, it's kind of like, again, it kind of goes back to like this concept EP. And it's like the first, why are you throwing this guy's random name? You just couldn't think of a name for this first track. And you're like, hey, let's just use this dude's name. You know, I don't know. Um, You got anything else to say about uh, how underrated this band is? I just don't know if I can explain it enough. They are yeah. so underrated. Just just go check them out. Please just go check them out. They Give do fill, I will chance. say, they do fill a hole kind of where uh, As I Lay Dying left off for me. Since I, I have not known this band until pretty recently, they do kind of fill that hole for me. Okay. When I need some kind of something a little heavy with a little bit of that particular guitar sound. I don't even know if I could explain it, but that. The oh, sound that those two about. bands have are... <laughs> I know what you're saying. They're not the same by any stretch, but they're similar enough that I, I dig it, and it right. fills a hole for me. Right. It fills that hole in your heart. It really does. Oh, As boy. I marry the blade to the skin. There you go. All right. Um, so my next question, <clears throat> I think I think we have talked about this before in years gone by. Um so they don't they don't consider themselves a like a Christian metalcore band. They don't have Christian in their genre title or whatever. But obviously Micah has his beliefs and those beliefs come through in their lyrics. Um 
you know, when you're talking about the albums, um, Son of the Morning and Children of Fire, those are surrounded by um, biblical themes and um, the whole idea of um, the final battle between, you know, God and, and uh, Satan. Um, so, like I said, I think you and I have had this discussion before in the past about bands that have Christian lyrics or even maybe are you know, under the title of like, I'm a Christian metal band, you know, or whatever. Um, and it's, it's, I think you had said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had said like, you just don't, you don't feel like it's right to hear this, this guy just like screaming, like basically bloody murder and like growling and everything. And, and having like, yeah, basically, yeah, that's basically what it is, you know, basically. Um, and that was Eric, not, you know, not some demon, but <laughs> no, um, I mean, basically that. And, um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I was just dreaming that. That um, is the way I used to feel for sure. Okay. So, so what is your opinion? What is your, what was your opinion, uh, then versus now on heavy screams, um, in bands with Christian themes or lyrics? And like I said, I, I I think of songs specifically by O Sleeper. I think of Son of the Morning. I think of The Finisher. I think of Two Ships. I think of Reveries and Flight. So what what is your opinion on that? All very good songs. Well, yeah, those my, are good. But... <laughs> my opinion has changed, in other words. Okay, I let's really, hear it. I, I wouldn't say I've completely flipped all the way, um, but I don't mind hearing different themes and things. I mean, I'm listening to different bands nowadays uh, ever since COVID, and I've discovered more than three bands in one year. Right. Uh, <laughs> which I have not done since, I don't know, 2006. But uh, anyway, like, uh, I don't mind when a band really has a really cool, uh, a whole idea behind an album. Right. A big concept. A, yeah. a huge concept, even if it bleeds into two albums. Right. Like, kind of like this which did is here. what happens here. <laughs> And uh, the, actually, the wonderful shirt I decided to wear today, Unleash the Archers, yes. uh, as part of his Canadian invasion. <laughs> Probably won't be covering that one because they're not core. But anyway, they have two albums. We that might talk, find a loophole. <laughs> there's my, there's always a loophole. But just as they, they have two albums discussing one particular, uh, I mean, event, you know, story of events. It's all about this one particular character. And I just really find that pretty cool. You could take that album, you could write a book about it, you could take it and you could write a screenplay, you could make a a D and D session out of it. I mean, whatever you want to do, it's got such a deep story to it. I, I dig it. For sure, yeah. Um I was trying to look up like me personally, like I don't I mean I don't, I can't think of anybody that I'm just like I'm disturbed by the, <laughs> by them doing, you know, the heavy screams with, you know, Christian themes or lyrics, but <clears throat> like, I always think of, um, the two songs I always think of is reveries in flight and two ships. And like in two ships towards the very end there, when they, you know, kind of come out of the, the kind of soft and just singing guitar and everything like that. And it gets heavy, you know, and he talks, um, uh, Micah comes in with the heavy screams and he says, you know, be the man I planted my warrior in the sea in your ocean death uh, in your ocean, death devours, but you can break its foaming, foaming teeth. You will not be abandoned, but I will not intercede. Uh, you've got to look past them, look past them, set your sight on me. But if you never turn and face me, you'll live, you'll live adrift alone, live your life in the night, and die with my light sitting right beside you. I've been right beside you. I'm always right beside you. And so, I kind of see that as a perspective of like God talking to this character, and I almost like. But the way his screams is, is like it's very emotional, right? It's like I'm trying to like shake you. I mean, what do I got to say? And what do I mean? Do I got to yell this at you to like basically get you to understand? It's that scene of grabbing somebody by the shoulders and shaking them exactly. just in their face, yeah. telling them something. Exactly. Um, and then like on Reverly, Re- Reveries of Flight, um, when they come in kind of with like the dueling vocals, kind of the kind of like chorus part. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Well, even like when Micah comes in, he says, you know, you, you keep denying my lead because I've tried. I've never pulled back my reach and I've stayed and I've died, but you keep looking for me where I'm not. Um, 
I won't be just where you want me to be. You've got to believe and just trust that I can be everything. Um, and then, yeah, they start kind of going to like the back and forth vocals and, um, it's like, God's got an answer for everything that this character is saying. You know, the character's like, it's like, you're deaf to my voice, but I'm, and, uh, you know, God comes in and he says, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm here. I've been here. It's like, you're looking for me in the wrong places. Um, but yeah, just like, I don't know. It, it, those kind of heavy screams in those moments, like, I just feel like it's very emotional and it gets to me. Right. You know, it fills that hole in my heart. There you, know? you go. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I, I really like that. And I was wondering um, when we were going to talk about this band, because like I said, I, I remembered back to us talking in years past about the whole heavy screams with Christian themes and lyrics. And I knew you were kind of like, yeah, you know, I don't really like that. And that always sat in my mind. And, and I understood, you know, why you said that. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's some points where I'm just kind of like, eh, he's going to hate me. And I know he's going to say something about this, but like impending doom, I'm just like, I don't, I just like, I can't, I don't know. I just don't get that one. Doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't know. That's just the, the screams are too heavy for me, maybe for, you know, well, with the, the Christian theme. It almost, anything. that one almost gets into like a, I don't want to say death metal, but he made fun of me for saying Christian black metal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, all I'm saying, if you're listening to me, Josh, all I'm saying is they're a Christian band, right? And their vocals and their music and everything sound almost black metalish, death, maybe death core. I think they're more labeled probably death core. He could correct us on this. Um, but yeah, it's just like, incoming. I mean, that's like some like thick, dark stuff. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. so I don't know. I mean, and don't get me wrong, too. I mean, I feel like once you get to like Children of Fire, especially just Children of Fire, it just like the tone and everything just seems really dark. Of course, if you think about the story behind, you know, Children of Fire every, the, and the concept, I mean, it's, yeah, it's dark times because there's. Yep, that is a dark album. They're all gone, man. Everything's yeah. gone. It's this is the afterlife or the uh, after the apocalypse, basically. You know, we're just kind of stuck here, kind of trying to figure things out in darkness, you know. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, I was wondering, um, what your opinion was on that and if it had changed or, or not. So a little bit to sum it up. Cool. 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 Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's talk a little bit about their debut album. Uh, when I am God. Now I was thinking about this question this past week and I'm, I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know, all three, their three newest full-length albums, Son of the Morning, Children of Fire, uh, Bloodied and Unbowed, all of them have a story to it. All of them have a concept to it. And when me and Josh sat down and talked about this, uh, this band, a while back, you know, we kind of discussed the whole thing of, you know, is there a concept to the When I Am God album? You know, we talked about, you know, well, look at the, look at the, um, album artwork. It's kind of like, you know, what, what is going on there? You know, I think he described it as, uh, like, a basically he thought it was like angel of death type with a bunch of uh, dead scene kids, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny the way he described that. But, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, we both tried looking some stuff up online and could never really find anything, um, about it and so i was going to ask you do you think that there's a concept story behind when i am god you know when it comes to a band and what they're thinking no one but they really know true but there is a theme like almost a thread running through there i don't know if i'd call it a concept but at least a common thread okay yeah i well, when I started, like, because for a while there, I was like, there's got to be a concept to this. There has to be a concept. Because you think about, like, I mean, I'm not saying that it has to be because of this, but, I mean, even through just this one album, um, you know, there's songs like, um, excuse me, uh, We Are the Archers, I know it was one. Um, of course, Vices Like Vipers. Mm. Um what's the other one siren song 
Uh, his name was Bishop. I think there's there may be a few other ones that are referenced, but once you get to uh, once you get past all those songs and you get to Building the Nations, he takes a bunch of those lyrics or references a bunch of those song titles at least in Building the Nations. Come on, if I can get back to this real quick here, I was gonna try to read read it real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Strong pass on. Okay, so he says, um, Oh, I found your prints on a fleshy pulse. You made the waves to meet my foot, and all the siren songs that ring on and on and on. I watched your vipers bring down the bishop and bait the chains to leave me hit. Well, I've brought all the archers, we lit all the pyres, and we've come to destroy destroy and rebuild. So it's kind of weird, like, in that one song that he references all those different things. So it's kind of like, okay, I remember when I first started listening to this album, and I heard those lyrics, and I was like, okay, is this a concept album? Is there some, like, story? Because, like, I feel like just in that one song, you've connected all the songs that came before it. And that's, like, the, I think that's the third to last song on the albums was like, okay, did you just like tell me, Hey, you should have been paying attention to all these other songs, you know? But then when I was, like I said, I was thinking about it this week. Um, and in the back of my mind, I was kind of like, well, you know, being a first full length album, a lot of times you're just trying to get out. You're just writing songs. You're just writing songs. You just put them on an album just to get it out there and, and, you know, go from there. So then I was thinking, well, maybe, Maybe it was that situation. Maybe it was just like, hey, you know, we this is just a collection of songs. And this one song, Building the Nations, is it, I just decided to reference all these other songs in it, you know. Um, this was I don't us know. building our nation. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I just, I was interested to see what you thought. Because like I said, me and Josh have had um, discussions about it and never really came to anything about it. But So I didn't know. I wanted to hear from your perspective, another listener's perspective. I'm somewhere in the middle, I guess. Because there is things that they fit this common thread that run through there and then there's other things that are kind of left field maybe not quite all the way in left field but it, do you have an example of a left field not off the top of my okay. head but it man where was it i don't remember just some of the lyrics didn't fit the the thought i had going in my head and okay. this just may be my Did thought because you, you feel like you start kind of building a story and then something yeah. comes in you're like whoa what no yeah there, that, so, what, that veered off okay what that didn't fit now? my story yeah here's fit. the train tracks and where we went yeah so yeah i don't know just something as i was listening through it the millionth and a half time and uh i was like huh that one just almost does not not fit but i like doesn't fit the story I was building in my head. Right. And but that goes back to what I was saying. Nobody knows what they're thinking except for the artist. It's true. And th- and that's the thing about it. And a lot of times artists will come out and say, you know, I don't like to um you know, well, this song means something for me, but it's gonna mean different things for other people. And I've I've gone down that route before personally. It's like I feel like, oh, I think this song is talking about this and you go look it up, it's like, oh no, it was I was totally wrong, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. Like, Whoa. Or well, the. Uh, I'm like, well, the like video my, comes I like out, my version better. So <laughs> the video comes out and it's like, oh, is that what we're talking about? I thought we were way over here talking about you know whatever this is. Speaking of music videos, real quick side note. Um, so this past week, I went, to, I went to go listen to a little bit of Spirit Box. <laughs> You're welcome. And no, this is, check this no check this out though. So I was trying to think. I wanted to watch a music video, right? Because they've got a bunch of them. And I thought to myself, okay, what was that one that Eric was telling me? <laughs> was telling me that Tom, or uh, t- uh, I can't want to call him Thomas, Tyler. Uh, Tyler said that he got spooked by. So yeah. so I I was like, okay, I think it's this one. So I started watching it. And, and I kept thinking, I was like, where's the scary part, you know? I kept thinking, well, maybe maybe it's just going to be like, all of a sudden this music video is just going to turn on its head and it's, you know, you know whatever. Maybe some underlying thing. I'm going to be like, oh, no, you know. And they got to the end of the music video. I was like, I don't think I watched the right one. Well, I watched, that was the, that was Secret Garden. That was That's, Austin. for whatever reason, that one, he's like, man, it's weird. I don't know what about it. It just twisted is that his the mind. that he was talking about Yeah, now? yeah. Oh, See, and that was like... Something about it just, you know, really? certain things hit certain people different ways. And that's true. That's and true. that one just twisted his mind. He's like, okay. what's going on? So, well, I was sitting there, I was like, I don't I don't think that was the right music video. So, I was like... And then there's mine. 
Well, and Did you I, watch think, that? I think I know what the one is. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll watch this one. This I think this one sounds familiar. So I watched it. I didn't even get through a minute of it, dude. I was like, I am just terrified. Was Hol- it hurt Holy, you? No, Holy Roller. Oh, I mm, yeah. have you seen that one? I do believe I have. Yeah, I was like, uh, uh, what is happening? <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm out. Hurt you is about where I stopped. I might have to show check that one out. Yeah, hmm. but I'm getting over that because I forget how many good music videos have gotten me more into songs. True. So anyway. Um, oh, speaking of. Anyway, back to um, Oh Sleeper here. I just you said music video, and I I was mean to tell you that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I just I I would just like to know if there was an actual um, story like the other three albums that follow it. That you know, hey, this is what this is about. But maybe it's just a deal with two, where it's like we're just gonna leave it up to you, and you know, you you can you know write your own story for it or whatever. Um, another question I wanted to ask you real quick. This is kind of a little bit um, out of our little rundown here, but do you? Um, and I think we may have talked about this just a little bit before. Um, I always, when I listen to O Sleeper, um, and maybe it's because I watched um, House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones when we were doing like that episode and everything, and I was really listening to O Sleeper a lot. Um, but when I listen to O Sleeper, I always think of like medieval battles. Um, just the way with like, especially like on their newest album, I immediately think of like medieval stuff, medieval battles. Right. They've got um, some uh, pretty interesting sounds and lyrics that go. Right. Yeah. You know. Well, and the one I always think about, the I think you said was on um, Let It Wave. Yeah. When he's talking about the banners and everything. Yeah. Know. Very anthemy. Mm-hmm. You know, if your banner's not out there waving in front of you. Who are you fighting for? Right, exactly. And that's that medieval yeah, thought, you know. Or and, even uh, just, um, you know, we are the archers. I mean, that's dude, that's uh, that's some terrifying lyrics there at the very end when he's talking about. Um, I heard the. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to say it. Just uh, I don't want to. I'll probably end up not doing it justice here. So I'll just look it up real quick here. Um, at the end of "We Are the Archers," he says. Um, uh, and then I heard an armored march. I heard an armored march that shook the trees. Uh, b- uh, bows bent as they sang, we are the archers. And I just thought, like, I can hear, like, the armored march in my head. It's just and like, how as they terrifying draw back be. the bow, the creak of the bow, yeah. as they sing their song, we are the archers. Just like that. this shadow of, like, a cloud just raining down on top of it. Yeah, it's just, woo! They do, they build a pretty picture. They do, they do, man. Micah does a really good job. Um, and his lyrics and everything. But um, I think of that, and so I wondered if you did, um, if you did too. And then um, I can definitely see that. Connected to that, I told Josh when we did our episode on Once Nothing, another great band. If you haven't heard of that band, that is a band that, I mean, you, we talk about O Sleeper getting disrespected. Once Nothing, 100 million, bazillion, whatever number you want to throw out there, disrespected, man. That is a band that you need to check out yep. right They're here. They're forgotten right now. and underfoot. Turn, turn this episode off right now. No, just pause the episode, come back to us, but go check out the band once nothing. We're, we're going to talk about them here uh, in a couple of episodes, but um, I always think of with them, uh, I think of like Civil War type uh, battles. It's because they're Southern. They're isn't Southern, it? man. It's like that Southern, man. Blue collar. Yeah. Um, so we talked about, we're talking a little bit about lyrics too. I, this is one thing I really like about O Sleeper is how they have these lyrics that are referenced um, throughout their discography. One of them I think of right off the top of my head. I think they, they referenced the archers a couple of times. I know that. I think so. Um, he talks about lighting the pyres a couple of times. Um, the one that always comes to my mind is um, the line that he says, uh, facing him one on 1,000. He says that in a song i can't remember it's on the second half of son of the morning but then he says it again um in was it let it wave no it's no 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 not let it wave um um maybe mutinous it's on the newest album kind of towards the middle um but he references it references it there um and then i thought of one i i heard one the other day and i wonder if you heard it 
so in siren song he says um kind of gets kind of close to the very end there where it kind of slows down just a little bit and the the woman's kind of singing in the background as the siren and um uh, the guitarist is singing a little bit and mike is kind of doing his his vocals too and he says um don't turn we need you don't turn we need you and i was like oh shoot that's from uh bane and disease man at the at kind of like the chorus part there he oh, says yeah. you know don't turn we need you it's like oh man i just love that so much man that how this band can just like connect everything just throw these little nostalgia lyrics at you it's oh it's so good man what, I, what do you think about that i've always enjoyed bringing not necessarily like a whole lyric but like just a little, little pieces just a fine. little piece yeah. yeah and reminding me oh that was in this song way back in the day and i love that song hey i love this song and yeah it just it works for me i like it yeah. a lot well, we just talked about it in this uh in our uh uh, previous episode of Alexis on Fire on History of the Chorus podcast. Go check it out. Um, on Dog's Blood EP, the song Gray has, it's not just a little snippet. It's kind of, I think it's a couple of lines of lyrics that were actually from their previous full length album, um, Old Crows, Young Cardinals, in the song Young Cardinals. And I told Josh, I said, like, he just started spitting those lyrics. I was like, Oh, no, he didn't, man. It was like, wow, that sounds really familiar because I've heard that before. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, just, I mean, how these bands can, like, do that is, or when they do that, it's like, I tip my hat to you, sir. Almost like it's a touch of nostalgia for us. Exactly. It's it's not like, oh, I'm running out of ideas, so I'm just going to put this back. No, it's, yeah, there's meaning to this, man. Yeah. 99% 99% of the time. For sure. There is a percent where they're like, I'm feeling lazy today. What lyric can I reuse? <laughs> uh, all righty, man. Um, we are down to our final question here. As always, I like to ask Eric um, his favorite um, album or album songs, um, lyrics, uh, and the uh, bonus. I don't think he's done it for us yet, but uh, if, he, if he's got a riff or riffs, he'd like to kind of, you know, mouth for us or whatever, <laughs> that'd be... That'd be nice. That'd be welcome. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> so, for sure, like, favorite album, in my opinion, Children of Fire. I really like it. It just, from, uh, you know, stem to stern, top to bottom, I enjoy it a lot. That one, I will say, I was surprised to hear you say that. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those albums, I put it on, and I just let it roll right through. Okay. There's not a miss for me on that one at all. Okay. And then... uh Mm-hmm. so favorite songs i have big scribble marks here because it changed three or four times while listening to this band because you listen to it once you listen to it twice then the third time it's like everything in the world has changed true so number three coming in is a uh, hush yael it's a good one and the probably the biggest reason for that is that it's based off of real events right and you guys had talked about that, that mm-hmm. 1979, I'm going to kill this name, but Nanahara attack. Yeah. Anyway, I wrote like it down. Your guess I, is as good as mine. Sorry. I wrote it down. I still can't read it, but I barely speak English, much less anything else. I like them there English, man. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. But uh, anyway, it's probably the most brutal song I know because it is based off of real life. And the things it describes in there, I was sitting there reading through that. I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. That is insane right so anyway that even like even like dealers of fame though it's like right. oh that's some that's some heavy stuff that we're talking about now man oh yeah and it's i mean oh when i figured out like what the story was and then you go back to the song and you listen to like what he's talking about of like this is on us man they they wanted our attention these kids wanted our attention and the media to talk about them and, it's, and now we're just we're get, we're feeding them their drug man of fame you know, it's like, wow. Yep. Yeah. We do obsess, obsess about things sometimes, man. And yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So number two I have here is let it wave. I still think that's... that way it comes in too, man, with that, like that. Oh, it's so good, man. It's like marching See, to that drum. I was going to say, it almost, that almost makes me think of like marching to the beat of a drum, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Here we come. We're, we're leading into walking war. in. Yep. And uh, that banner, let it wave. 
It's mm. it's a pretty anthemy song. Yeah. If you're into that kind of thing, I'm not always into it, but man, that song is good. I it's like a good, that a it's lot. It's a good start to the album for sure. It hits so hard. It made me want to listen to the rest of the album. Right. And uh, that's not always the case with those first songs. You hit hard in that first one. You got me. Right. You hooked me good. Hook, line, sinker. 100%. So, number one, Vices Like Vipers. Woo! Vices Like Vipers. Probably not a surprise to anybody. That song is fantastic. Yep. That's a good song, man. It really is. And it actually, it reminds me a lot. I was actually thinking about it this week. Like, lyrically. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I didn't write it down, did I? Fantastic. So, uh, uh, there's a song, uh, (laughs) anyway, I forgot what it is. There's a song I used to listen to way back in the day. It was making me think of it. I'm like, what is this? What am I remembering? And I went and looked at the old music video of it. Mm Kind of got me into looking at music videos and stuff like that again. But, uh. Oh man, it just it started getting me feeling like watching old it's stuff again. Yeah. I really like and this this band almost feels nostalgic to me in a way, but I haven't listened to them for that long. Right. I mean, what about 10 months now probably I've been listening to them. But there's parts of it I listen to it I'm like, "Man, that's so good. It's like being back in uh my old vehicle back in the day. I'm just riding down the road and, yep. and listening to this song, but it never happened." But it feels like that. It's, right, yeah. It fits that era for me. Yeah, I hear you. Cool, so, man. anyway. What about, uh, you got any lyrics? Specifically lyrics? Specifically? Specifically. Well, Specifically. oh, let's see. Uh, oh, man, there's lots of good lyrics. I. It's hard to there's pick. There's just so many good It's lyrics. hard to pick something, like cherry pick it out of right, the album yeah. because, or even the song, because it's, it's all such a story. I just want to tell you the whole story, the whole song. Right. The, uh, oh, Let It Wave, though, starts out, like I said, kind of that drum leading me into mm-hmm. battle. You know, all your heroes are martyrs. Shouldn't you be the same? Should you be the same? And then it just goes even harder. And I'm like, oh, so good. Man, this flag is more than a symbol. It means more than a symbol. Let it wave. Let it just wave. Just let it wave, man. Just let it wave. I, I mean, that song is fantastic. And that's just... A little snippet of how right. all their songs are just about fantastic. Exactly, yep. And, uh, I, yeah, same thing with, like, Hush I L. Oh, I don't think there's a bad line in that song. No. We're going to make these victims our martyrs, man. Yes. And, oh, man, just going top to bottom in that whole thing, the way he's able to tell that story. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, such a short time. That song's not four minutes it's long. Not, I don't think it's four And he tells something that took me, I don't know, 20 minutes to read through the Wikipedia page on right. it. Cause I'm sitting here going, Oh wow. This I want to read more. Yeah. That, there was a little bit of that. A lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it, it is amazing. These lyrics are, they are so good. He is a, a poet, a poet. And he didn't even know it. Oh, this man knows. Uh, okay. We're going to get a bonus one this week. Are we going to get riffs or not? <sighs> Let's see. Um, uh, of course, it's kind of hard with O Sleeper because a lot of times, like, I can never remember what his name is, but the guitarist always kind of goes in a... I was about to say, I I, I can't do it any good. I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I was immediately thinking of Let It Wave where it's like he... Uh, I don't remember what part of it. Like, it immediately just starts going... <laughs> and uh, wow, okay. that right there, that's what I like. The <laughs> exactly. Oh, I don't know why this made me think of this. This one's for you, Josh, by the way, if you're listening, if you made it this far. Um, you, we're, you were asking me about banjo, my favorite banjo parts in a song a couple of, out, or a couple of episodes ago. I thought of a brand new one. The Chariot uh, Dialogue with a question mark, I believe it, I believe it is. Uh, it's got the little banjo part at the very beginning of it. So um, yeah, I think uh, I think that may be one of my favorite. Sorry, that was a little side note. And bonus upon the bonus. Uh, yeah, I think it is dialogue. Dialogue with the question. Anyway, um, all right. Do you have any final words for the listeners about the band O oh Sleeper, Eric? They actually, I got to looking up their uh, videos. Let's hear it. So uh, they actually have some pretty good videos. So I looked into uh, End Seekers was one of them. Mm-hmm. 
And that's like a comic book reel almost. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's a pretty cool concept. I mean, yeah, I just, I enjoyed that a lot. Then son of the morning is like, it's so dark. You can barely see what's happening. (laughs) There is that, but it's like a mixture, like the animation style. Yeah mixed with like the band cutting in and showing them doing their thing mm-hmm. in a very dark kind of looking way. I was going to say, if you, if you watch the finisher too, cause it's kind of the same way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it reminds me a lot of uh parallels that I actually mentioned earlier okay. from as I lay dying. Mm-hmm. And if you mix in a little pray for plagues. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda, I always think of pray for plagues when I, when I see the dark, uh, the the, the when the yeah. band's playing, yep. kind of mix those two together. And that's kind of what you get out of some of the yeah, morning. You get a baby, right? <laughs> and it's beautiful. <laughs> And it's glorious. <laughs> so anyway, I really do like a lot of their videos were really good too. So okay. anyhow. Cool, man. Um, check out the band. Absolutely. Check out the band. People go put it on right now. Oh, do you have an album that somebody like uh, a brand new listener? What, what do you think would be a good album to get them started down the right path? <laughs> so I really like Children of Fire. Mm-hmm. I know it's a dark album. What's but I think but, the way Josh always says it, what's the most accessible album? I think Children of Fire is pretty accessible okay. because it does have your hard, your heavy, your face melting. It also has a little bit of soft. Okay. I mean, at least Hush Al has got a little soft anyway. Sure. A minute or two, just here and there. Hey, you and get it the, really you get shows. The first, you get the first two acoustic tracks by O Sleeper, the first and only two. So, so there's a little soft in there, yeah. but it really shows great lyrics too. And uh, just a really good range, like like you said, got your acoustic all the way to your face melters, and everything really in between. And I like it. Okay, made me think of one more lyric I wanted to say real quick. Um, what do you think about the song "The Summit" to finish "Bloody and Unbowed"? Been a minute since I listened to it. Let Man, me... that's so. Let me just quote for you here the chorus real quick, because this is this is some hard truth right here. If you really sit back and you think about it, he says. Um, and now I have to look it up. <laughs> Seriously, I just had it on my mind, and now I've lost it here. Um, uh, so he says at the chorus part, he says, Every man has a mountain, oh, yes. and every day is spent climbing. The view from the top is just the journey that brought you up, that brought you, and you'll give it all up for one more day at the bottom. At the summit, you'll wish that you were anywhere but here. It's clear that every man has a mountain to fear. So every day, dude, we, I mean, just in our daily lives, we get up and we, we climb the mountain, whatever that mountain is, the task, whatever. And just getting in my car some days. Yeah. Some days, just a simple thing. Just getting out of bed. Um, and so it's weird because like sometimes you get to the very top of that mountain and you sit there and you're like, really, this is it. This is what I climbed and I exerted all that energy for, you know, and. Yeah, I don't know. It's just you reach that goal and you look down and you go, "I was better off there." I was better off down there, man. You get back down there and you're like, "I was better off up there." And it's just, uh, yeah, one hill after or one mountain after another. It's just pretty interesting, man. Um, those like you said, hard truth. It's some hard truth, man, for sure. It's some hard truth. All right, well, let's get on out of here and close the another chapter on the history of the books after hours podcast. So. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at is survived by pro for news and the latest episode postings, not just on this show, people, but our other shows as well. You have the red right hand podcast, which has covered all six seasons, plus a couple of mini episodes of the BBC slash Netflix hit TV show, the Peaky blinders. And we also have the throne of the dragon podcast, which so far has covered season one of HBO's house of the dragon soon to be season two when it comes out. And we're uh, hoping to continue our Aegon's conquest episodes um, coming up here shortly, where we'll talk about the Dornish wars um, and Josh will be covering all that and, and letting us know all about that stuff. Um, also while you're on it uh, on Twitter, uh, make sure to follow my co-host at Joshua Lynn Gary, you don't have a Twitter, do you? I do not yet. You can't follow him, man. You can't follow him if he doesn't have a Twitter, people. Uh, make sure to leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on whatever podcast service you are using. And if you want to listen to us and see our smiling faces, uh, but not ours, not me and Eric, because we this is not a video one. This is just audio. Uh, but you can you can head over to our YouTube page. 
Just search is Survive by Productions, and they'll have every episode from all of our shows. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Would you recommend our, uh, our little shows here, Eric? I do enjoy them. Good, good. And if he lots is, of good if, stuff. If he enjoys them, so should you. Why just let him have all of them? You know, enjoy it with him. All right, until the next episode where we talk about the band every time I die, we will see you then.